Hi and welcome back to Amateur Vintage Electronics. Today I'm going to clean something. Now ever since I started my hobby I have cleaned a lot of stuff. I've um, restored a lot of devices which I'm actually proud of because um, I got a lot of stuff to work and sometimes you get your hands on really dirty used old stuff but Optically, I've never had a keyboard that looked that nasty. Um, I will show you an up close video right now. This is the Apple Keyboard 2. And as you see, this is not only yellowed, this keyboard obviously also smoked way too much. It looks like it, it was housed in an opium den. And um, yeah, the, the problem here is that it's also not worth that much. Like for instance, a Macintosh Plus keyboard. Um, I have a video about restoring such a keyboard also on my channel. Uh, but still, you know, it's, it's an old Mac keyboard. So I'm trying to give my best. And this time I will videotape it because um, I hope that there is a real transformation visible to everybody. Now, before I start with the actual cleaning, I'm going to do two things. One is I switch to wearing gloves because I don't want to touch it. And the second thing is I'm actually going to test it in order to see if it works at all. Because if it does not, it might just not be worth it at all to go through that. As you see, I'm using my Dragware ADB to USB adapter. I also have a demo video about that online. Um, I think it's a great tool to test it or to test any ADB accessory on a newer Mac. You probably already saw that it reacts. I'm just going through every single key here in order to see which one is working and which one is not. Um, Surprisingly, it seems like almost all the keys are reacting, which is rare because, well, first it looks really ugly, so there will be a lot of dust and other dirt inside. And secondly, um, usually some keys are intermittent, so you need a bit of contact spray to, to get them working again. But so far, so far all the keys reacted, which is good. Well, let's start cleaning. So as you see, I put some paper towel below because some debris is actually gonna fall out. Um, I'm glad that the footstands actually are intact, which is good. As you see, it's the Apple Keyboard 2. It's made in Malaysia. Um, and the underside actually looks a lot cleaner than the front side, obviously. So now let's see which surprises hide inside there. Let's try to move it very carefully. Oops. Ah, perfect. Okay, you can see the beautiful platinum inside which actually doesn't look that bad. And the, the switch is actually embedded directly in the frame. Okay, that's good to know. Let's put this aside and let's have a look at the keyboard. And well, it's actually a lot better than I expected, but you can see some dirt here, also some rust here. That's due to sweat from the hands getting into the keyboard. Um, I think this has been repaired already because as you see the ADB ports being taped down. So we have here three more screws. All right. Okay. That's good. And it is slowly coming out good so as you see 
this looks ugly. And let's also check the back side here. Okay, that's actually not that bad. I expected worse. So basically, uh, you need to be careful here with these um, flat band cables because these are very delicate. So I will just clean it with a brush and then I'll start removing keys. So I've brushed everything down a bit. Also decided to remove the flat band cable in order to get these two things apart because it's easier to clean and I don't need to be care as careful as I would need to be otherwise. Um, then I took out the key because I'm gonna clean it separately. And I will also take out the logo because that's basically the only thing that um, you shouldn't retrobrite because, well, it's a bit um, delicate due to the colors and this actually, the colors will fade and it will bleach badly. So you just use a, use a toothpick. Every part that has a logo has also a little hole on the back. And here you see the original color it should have revealed. So there is a huge difference. And I really hope that you will be able to see this at the end. Um, so I will put the logo as well as the screws in a safe place so they don't get lost and the next thing is I'm actually gonna get rid of all the keys so I just tried it with one key and this is obviously since it's assembled in Malaysia a newer Mitsumi um, mechanism so not one of the traditional made in USA ops key stems um, so there is this little rubber thing in between the mechanism and each key, probably to protect it from um, dust and residue, which is actually pretty smart. Um, but that means I really have to pull each key out and I have to do it by hand because otherwise I will harm these rubber things because usually I use a piece of plastic, plastic plier in order to get them out. So this will be tricky because um, also the keys are made of very thin plastic and you risk breaking them. Um, but nonetheless, I will try it and I will put the keys in the correct order onto a sticky surface. So I will keep them in their proper order. Just to show you up close, with certain keys you need to be extra careful because these have little metal handles that hold them in place. These are usually the enter button here, the enter button here, the space bar, and then these function keys. They usually all build similar, so you need to be extra careful when removing them. You probably couldn't tell because I time-lapsed everything, but this took about 15 minutes because you need to be extra careful when removing all that. And now I'm just gonna take a brush. Okay, so the board has been cleaned rather nicely, but well, you can also here see all the dirt and debris that fell out of that keyboard. Um, regarding the keys, there is a little problem because apparently I need to retrobrite them. So that's how they look. And I use an isopropanol wipe to wipe them down real good. And while they get really clean, um, you can still see that the plastic definitely yellowed as opposed to this platinum color it should have. 
which means I need to clean every single key and then start the retro brightening process. Now, as I told you to keep the keys in place, I have just a piece of cardboard where I put some double-sided surface on it so they stick and stay in place. And now I'm actually gonna clean every single key. Nice. So as you see, all the keys have been cleaned. They look rather nice when you look at them like that. But when you actually check the bottom side of each key, you see the huge difference in coloring. So the beautiful platinum color it should have and the yellow plastic they have. So I'll retrobrite them along the case. And for that, I'm going to use uh, the pasting method. I will also post a link to my retrobriting video right now. Um, I'm basically applying a hydrogen peroxide agent with a brush and then put it on the sunlight and repeat the process over the course of a couple of days. And this will revert the discoloration of the plastic. After only one day of retrobiting, the keys are finally done. Uh, just let me show you up close here. You have the top side of the key and the bottom side. So they're actually the same color. They're platinum again. The case needs a couple more days um, because it has been affected more heavily and it's made of a, out of a different material than the keys. And now I'm going to reinstall them. As you see, I've put one already here. I will use the rubber domes again. Just put them here and then push the keys onto the board. Just to show you <coughs> the completely reassembled board. And as you see, it looks really clean and nice. So the retro brightening is finally done. Um, as you see, we have here the back case. Now the back case looks, well, almost as new again, um, except this side. You probably can't see it on the video due to the lighting here. Um, the front panel is not 100% perfect. You can still see that there is a little color difference between um, the space behind the logo and the case. But um, I didn't retrobrite the keys to 100% because um, I saw that some already lose their marking. This is not to, due to the retrobriting, this was already before. Um, but just as a precautionary measure, I didn't want to treat them too often. But anyways, this is an old keyboard. So if it looks old, then, well, it's just, it just looks as it's supposed to do. Um, in other words, we are completely fine here. And now I will do the final reassembly of this keyboard. The keyboard has been fully restored, as you see. It looks really beautiful compared to the, the thing we started with. I'll show you in a before and after image right now. And yeah, it's always worth restoring old stuff. And that's how you can do it. Take care everybody and thanks for watching.